Welcome to Presentations, Module B, Modifying a Presentation, Inserting Objects, Applying Special Effects with Animation. In Module B, or 2, we are going to cover a lot of information here. So let's get started. So just like you would in Word, so you'll notice a lot of features that you can apply in Word, you can also do in PowerPoint. So it's always nice to have lists either in bullets or numbering, so that way it's organized. So within your slide and whatever layout you decide to select, you can use your bullets. And again, remember you could use the default solid circle or you could pick from the other choices, or you can define new bullet and find your own bullet for your list. Or you could go with numbering. You can also indent. So if you noticed here, this is an, an item, two items here, but then if you have more items under one particular category, you can use your increase list level so that it's set off by a different marker. If you finished here uh, on this list and you pressed enter, you can increase and go into another level. If you ever wanted to go back, you would do decrease list level. So if you were in two levels, you could decrease back to your original. So that's working with multi-level lists using tab and shift tab to return. You can also format just like you would in Word with your line spacing. And you can set it from single one and a half to double, two and a half to three or anything specific that you wanted. You could fill it in exactly what you wanted. There's also spacing before and after with points and your alignment, just like you would use in Word. The find and replace feature, an amazing feature in Word, you can also use within PowerPoint. So if you're looking for um, dates that were appearing several times within the slideshow pre presentation and you didn't want to have to search and look for all of them, you would tell it to find 2015 through 2016 and replace it with and this could be either information of text or names or anything you want. You can match the case, whole words, whatever you'd like, and replace them all. Fast, easy, and efficient. Insert shapes from the Insert tab, just like you would in Word. And once you select your shape and you get the crosshairs arrow, you can um, make it as large as you lock, want, adjust it later, go into the shapes format button and change the shape fill, the shape outline, the shape effects, just like you would in Word. And we, here we have the rotation, the object is selected, um, the four arrows is to move the object or picture. The diagonal is to make both the um, width and height smaller or larger. This little, little, little yellow circle is an adjustment handle, and if you click that, you can make the sun um, either wider or more narrow. Not all pictures have an adjustment handles, but some do. do. You can go into the shape styles, what's available, the colors are limited, or you can go into shape fill and shape outline and also shape effects. Within the shape fill, there this is the weight of the of the um, outline. You wanted to do an outline. There are also dashes that you could select, and you can also change the color of the outline. So this is under the outline. This top one is the shape fill. You can also go so shape fill, shape outline, and shape effects. If you wanted to add a shadow or a reflection, glow, soft edges, bevel, 3D, there's a lot you can do with your pictures. And you can even change the size of the glow so it's a bigger, brighter glow, or um, change the transparency so it's not as bright. Aligning, if you look at the top one, they're all uneven. You could actually just choose, first select all of them by clicking the first one then hold shift and select the other two, and then choose align selected objects, and then click align again and choose align so that they're even on the bottom. Or you could distribute them horizontally. Ordering them, if you wanted to change the order of the um, pictures so that um, this one, the arrow goes through all of them. On the middle picture, I sent the arrow back 
and then I can set the arrow back on all of them. So you could have it right now with arrows in front of all of them, and you could set it so it just goes, the arrow goes behind this picture, or the arrow goes behind all the pictures, or you could bring it forward. Grouping, if you wanted to move these pictures, you'd have to move it carefully one at a time, or select all three of them. So select the first one, hold shift, and select the other two, and then group them so that when you go to move it, you're moving it as one group. And if you decide you want to ungroup them to change out a picture, you would just select the three, or just select the picture and click ungroup. So that's a great feature to group them together. Smart art, what an amazing feature. So we did talk about bullets. So if you had a list of items in bullets, which is fine, but um, choosing smart art is another way to showcase a list of items in a more um, three-dimensional layout. And there are so many options to choose from. As you go through each of the categories and you hover over each one, it gives you a brief description of when you should use this type of smart art, mark, smart art graphic. You can do it from the insert under the illustrations and choose smart art, or you can do it right from the placeholder icon, insert a smart art graphic. Once you type in the information, you can type it within the box, or you can type over here where it says type your text here. Either way, it shows up. Now, as you're typing the text, if the information you're typing is, is, um, is larger than what will fit in it, it'll automatically adjust the font size so everything fits in that text box. You can also promote or demote or add shapes if you need more. Um, you can move them up or down and change the order of them. If you chose a particular smart art graphic that only had three um, vertical um, boxes and you needed a fourth, you could just add a shape. Within the smart art, you can go to customize. You can change the color and you can change what's called smart art styles and the, each as you hover over each one this one's called subtle effect but they also have 3d um, models which are pretty um, pretty cool to look at so catches your audience's attention so and then again also in the smart up tools not only can you shape change the shape fill and the outline but you can change the shape effects with the shadow reflection glow and so forth so this particular one, if you want to see more options, you click the arrow with the down, the line with the down arrow, and I chose, um, when you hover over them, it tells you the name of it. I chose a cycle, and, and you can change the colors of them, you can change the 3D um, dimension of it, and that's all in design, the dimensions over here on the right. Transitions. A transition is what happens when you go from one slide to the next slide. Is it just going to it or are you having some type of um, animation happening between the slides? So it could be subtle or um, exciting or um, we'll see the different types, but it just, uh, it's, it's nice to see what happens from one slide to the next slide. Keeps your audience um, at their attention. There's exciting. So we had subtle, which were, was, and there's still pretty, pretty um, nice variety of options to choose in the subtle. And of course, more exciting. I think everyone seems to like the origami or the dissolve. Um, I like glitter and vortex. And some of them within the option that you choose, they have ways that it can come in from the left, from the bottom, from the top. Um, some of them you can change. Do you want it to be a diamond shape or a hectagon? There's lots of choices. Uh, within the um, transition. And of course, dynamic. So, so the Ferris wheel is one of my favorites. So there's three of them, subtle, uh, exciting, and dynamic. So, so right now it's set for none. And then you, you can um, choose whatever you choose. And if you missed it, you can click preview to see what it did. And then if you tried fracture and you wanted to see it, you could click preview. Whatever is your last one that you pick is the one that will stay. So if you ch chose push and then you chose gallery, automatically get gallery becomes the transition. So whatever your last selection is, that's the one it becomes. And you can apply it to just one slide or all your slides in your presentation. 
So if we wanted the same push to be, and we can um, change the duration of it, um, and you can apply it to all of them. And once you, you select a transition on a slide, over in your thumbnail navigation area on the left-hand side, underneath the number, you get a little star, and that shows that there's a transition on that slide. So this, what I was saying, when you choose a particular, not all of them have it, but if you choose a, a, um, a style of your transition, and if this is faded, effect op options, that means there's no choices. If it's um, available, you'll be able to click and choose anything you'd like. Whatever one you select, the most recent is the one that stays. You can attach sound effects to each slide. And it could be to individual slides, or you can choose apply to all. And you can change the duration of the sound. If you didn't want any transition, you could choose none. Make sure you choose to apply to all, so they all had none. Advancing the slides. So normally, um, you, you would have to um, click between each slide so that or you can set it so that it advances after so much time. Um, that's dangerous because if you talk either too fast or, or slow and you're not in line with the, with the slides advancing, it could be a mess. So sometimes it's best just to wait on the click, but you could also um, set it for a timer so that it advances or um, at a specific time or waiting for you to click. And it doesn't mean it has to be a mouse click, it just be spacebar or arrow. Animation. So animation is, um, it's interactive, but it's a little different from transition. Transition is what happens from one slide to the next slide, whereas animation happens to what is in the slide, whether it's the name of the slide title or any bulleted list you have, or even a picture. The objects in the slide, you can have some type of um, animation. And there are a couple of, um, there's an entrance, so you could have, like, if it was a picture, you could have uh, some exciting um, entrance for that picture. And then you could have an exit, or you could not have an exit, just have it, it entrance. And then you can have it emphasize, maybe spin while once it enters, it does a spin. And then there's also what's called motion path. So the object would move in either a line, straight line, or in arcs, or you can even do a custom. Loops are pretty cool too. So that would happen um, once it's in. And then if you wanted to have it an entrance, and then spin, and then also loop, and then you can have an exit. So you, don't, you can have one or all. So if you, again, same way as transition, you have to select either the title, the bulleted list, or if it's a picture, in the slide, select one of those items, and then you would go to animation, it's set for none, you have your entrance, emphasis, and exit, and you would, um, you would select it. If this is not faded, that means you have more options. Do you want it to fade, fly in from the top, the bottom, the left, the right? You can make choices there as well. This is to indicate that this um, slide has a transition, and then um, it also has um, an, uh, this number here indicates there is, so you have your title here and a picture. That one shows that it has an animation. So the star under the two is saying slide two has a transition, and the one here is indicating that it has, this little text box has animation. And these are the more options if you wanted more entrance effects, emphasis, exits, or paths. You can choose, depending on them, they're not all shaded, that you could choose an effects option. Some are. You can even add more animation. So if you just had the entrance effect and you also wanted to have emphasis, you would click add an animation so that you could add more to it. To remove an animation, if you decide you don't want it, um, just press the delete key and the animation will disappear by just selecting the number and deleting it. This is to add animation if you wanted it to have fly in and then also emphasis, a pulse, you could do that as well. And then it would have two numbers on it. I'm going to stop here and we'll continue on the next presentation with this slide.